Okay, we're gonna learn a little bit more about comparing fractions and we're gonna focus on comparing fractions to half. So you can compare fractions by deciding if the fraction is more or less than a half. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut it out and glue it in, but we'll save our directions. You might have also seen a little tip that was on the side. If you wanna save this, you can just put it in your pocket with your other vocabulary words and then you'll have it for later. It says a quotient is the answer to a division problem. Okay, so let's look at section A. It's gonna give us some hints. It says, if the numerator is one, the fraction is less than one half. Hmm, so right here it says, circle the fractions that are less than half. So it says, if the numerator is one, the fraction is less than a half. So is one fifth less than a half? Yes. Is one sixth less than a half? Yes. What about 10 tenths? No, that's not a numerator of one. Okay, what about one third and one ninth? So if you see a numerator of one, you know it's less than a half. Well, except a half. A half is the one rule breaker because it's exactly a half. But let's see why that is. So I have some fraction bars right here. This one has been broken into three pieces. Well, the halfway point is about right here. So if I only have a numerator of one, that means I'm only shading in one part, and one part is less than half. So let's look at fourths. Well, the halfway point would be right here. So if I only shade in one part, then it's less than a half. So this one has sixths. Here's the halfway point. But if I only shade in one sixth, it's less than a half. Well, this one has fifths. So the halfway point would be about right here. And if I only shaded in one, it would be less than one half. And that's why if you see a numerator of one, you know that it's less than one half. So let's explain that rule right here. So if the numerator is one, it's only a very small part of the whole. All right, so now let's learn another rule. So part B says, if the numerator and denominator are in counting order, the fraction is more than a half. So what does that mean to be in counting order? Well, three comes right before four in counting order. So these are counting orders. So since three and four are in counting order, then three fourths is more than a half. So the directions say for part B, circle the fractions that are more than a half. So three fourths counting order, so that's more than a half. Seven sixths. Well, that is in counting order, even though it's an improper fraction, it is still more than a half. What about five sixths? Yes. What about nine tenths? Yes. What about 12 thirteenths? Yes. So all of these are more than a half, and this one right here is more than a whole because it's an improper fraction. So let's go back here and figure out why this works. So we'll start with three fourths, and this is the model that represents fourths. Well, three fourths is three of them. That's more than a half. Let's try five sixths. So here's six, let's do five of them. One, two, three, four, five. See how it's more than a half? So this is fifths. So let's pretend we had one that was four out of the five. 
See how it's more than a half? The reason counting order can tell you that it's more than a half is because when you see counting order, you know that it's almost all of the whole. It's five out of six, that's almost all of it. It's nine out of 10, that's almost all of it. It's 12 out of 13, that's almost all of it. So when you see them in counting order, we know that it's almost all of it. And if it's almost all of it, then it's more than a half of it. So the only rule breaker is half because a half is in counting order, but a half is a half. Okay, so how do we explain that in our own words? If you see a fraction that has counting order, It represents almost the whole. Okay, so right away we have two rules that can help us compare to a half. If you see a numerator of one, a unit fraction, then you know it's less than a half. If you see a fraction that has a numerator and denominator in counting order, you know it's more than a half. How would you know that it's exactly a half? Do you remember when we studied this a little bit ago when we were talking about equivalent fractions and we talked about how when the number are doubles, then it's exactly a half. Okay, that was extra, so let's move on to C. It says, divide the denominator by two to find the numerator that is exactly a half. So we can look at these and we can find the numerator that is exactly half. So let's just do that. Here's the denominator, six. What is half of six? Half of six is three, so three six is exactly half. Okay, so let's do eights. What's exactly half of eights? Well, half of eight is four, so the exact halfway point in eights would be four eighths. Okay, so let's do this one. If we have four, half of four is two, so an equivalent half would be two-fourths. Let's do tenths. Half of 10 is five, so five would be the numerator. Five-tenths is exactly a half. What do you think is exactly a half of six-twelfths? Well, half of 12 is six, so the halfway part is six twelfths. So the halfway point of six is three sixths. The halfway point of eighths is four eighths. The halfway point of four is two fourths. The halfway point of tenths is five tenths. And the halfway point of twelfths is six twelfths. This is important to know if you're comparing by a half. So let's look at the next part of the directions. It says numerators that are smaller are less than a half. Numerators that are larger are more than a half. So if we found the halfway point is three, then three six is exactly that. Let's do this one. If we found the halfway point was four, then two eighths is less than a half. If we found the halfway point of fourths is two, then three is more than a half. If we found the halfway point of tenths is five, then seven is more than a half. And if we found the halfway point of twelfths is six, well then this one is equal. So in your mind, if you're comparing to a half, figure out where the halfway point is and then just compare your numerator to that. This takes some practice and thinking, but when you get really good at comparing fractions to half, you get really good at comparing fractions to each other. I'll see you next time.